Are diffusers the best things for audio? Well, I would think so, but let's, let's see where we're going with this. Myron in Tennessee. Diffusers, in my opinion, are the best thing for stereo. Yet, you never talk about it. I'm wounded, sir. I'm wounded. <laughs> you know what? He's right. I probably don't talk about it enough, but I can tell you, you are right. And I am very passionate about diffusers. I know. I'll get criticized, like, you're really weird. But let's, let's talk about diffusers. There's a whole bunch of them right here, just as a, a precursor to where we're going to go with this. So let's look first at the goal of audio in a room, OK? What do we want out of a room? We want a room to sound live. Not overly live, not overly dead. We want it to sound natural, as if we were um, it, it just it, somewhere that we don't pay attention to. So if you're in a very echoic situation where there's a lot of echoes, you're inside of a bathroom, real, a shower stall, right? You'll notice that because your voice is echoing. You might even be brave enough to start singing. God, that's why it's a good thing we can close the door in the bathrooms. <laughs> or if you're in a very dead room, I've been in anechoic chambers, which have zero reflections, and it's an eerie thing. It's, it's, it is so eerie, you can actually hear the blood running in your ears. It's, it's, it's spooky. As soon as you speak, it's like something grabbed the sound out of your mouth and ripped it out. There, it's, yeah, so dead rooms suck all the life and energy out, and overly live rooms uh, have the opposite effect, and there's too much, too much going on. So the perfect room is a room who's just natural in the way it sounds. All right. So now let's say we have a room with natural sound. We have a problem, and the problem is we're taking speakers in the middle of, or in, in, you know, one end of the room or whatever. We're going to play it, and the sound from those speakers is going to go directly over to our ears. And our ears are going to localize that and say, oh, I know where that sound's coming from. It's coming right from that left and right speaker. But something else is happening at the same time. Not only do we get direct, reflect, or direct sound, but we get reflected sound. And that happens because we're inside of a box called a room. So when a speaker plays, as I say, it, it broadcasts out a wave, which goes directly to my ears. Along the way, that same wave is going to hit the sidewall and bounce off that wall and come back and hit my ear. So I got direct coming here, and then a little bit later, I have a reflected sound. And it comes a little later because it takes time for sound to travel. And the distance between here to the wall and then back to my ear is longer than the distance of directly going over here, right? So a few milliseconds later, I'm going to hear a delayed sound that originally came from here. And my ear is going to localize that. It's going to know, ah, OK. That, and it gets confused, and the imaging gets confused. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to eliminate that reflected sound. But there's a problem. We just talked about it. Problem is, we don't want to deaden the room. So imagine that I have the perfect live room. As soon as I put up something that's going to absorb that reflection so it doesn't come back and hit my ear, I've deadened the room. And now I have a separate problem that I don't want. The answer is one of these, a diffuser. A diffuser obfuscates the sound. It blurs it so that when that sound hits the wall, it scatters it in such a way that whatever comes back to your ear no longer has directional cues. And the brain says, I'll know what that is. And it ignores it as if it were noise. And it does that because each of these panels in here, you have these slats that you can see. So sound hitting a slat is going to bounce off like this or like that, but only a very specific frequency, right? Because 
uh, of, of its size. And then we have very small slats, we have openings, we've got all kinds of uneven surfaces. And when sound hits those uneven surfaces, different reflection patterns occur, scattering the sound, obfuscating it, blurring it, we tend to ignore it. You don't have to have these fancy schmancy RPG diffusers. Another diffuser that uh, is something that not many people think about, but is really great and, and keeps marital harmony alive, are books. I created a listening room back in Vail when I, uh, uh, I think, was it for Gen? No, I had left Genesis at that point. I think it's when I had first started PS Audio in 97. I built a listening room, and instead of diffusers, I simply built bookshelves that line the walls. Then I went down to the Goodwill, the thrift shop, and I, you know, I got 25 cent books of uh, all heights and le uh, uh, depths, and I lined the walls with those uneven surfaces. They worked great. What gorgeous, wonderful diffusers they were, and it really, really helped out. So that's how a diffuser works. They are critical and important. You'll see them in any sound room that I build or any mastering studio that Gus is involved in. They are critical. They're something that we want to use. And thank you for that question. Okay. I'll, I'll try and talk more about it. Sorry. I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the heads up. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.